Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, July 13. The Tourism Enhancement Fund, TEF, will be providing 500 COVID-19 protective kits valued at more than $15 million to small tourism properties across the island. The protective kits include two touchless garbage bins, two touchless hand sanitizer dispensers, and two infrared thermometers. Minister Edmund Bartlett made the announcement on Friday. With the development of these rigorous protocols, we feel that our workers, as well as the visitors and our nation as a whole, um, will be in a safer position. Managing this risk as we are, we can't be absolute in terms of whatever we say, but we all manage the risk together and we do what is necessary to minimize and mitigate and to ensure that we all remain safe and healthy. The donation is part of a broader strategy to provide assistance to small and medium-sized tourist enterprises, SMTEs, so they can retool and rebound from the adverse impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. These SMTEs consist of artisans, craft vendors, attractions and tours, transport operators, beauty shops and textiles, duty-free stores, restaurants and eateries, bed and breakfast establishments, and farmers. An older Portland couple is the newest recipient of an indigent house provided by the Ministry of Local Government. The beneficiaries are Everald and Hazel Gibson of Long Road in the Eastern Parish, where they lived for years in a dilapidated structure. That structure was replaced with a fully furnished one-bedroom house completed with a 1,000-gallon black tank. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie says 12 more houses like the Gibsons will be built within this fiscal year. So we're going to be looking at the corporate area. We're going into other parishes across the country. When we started this program, we committed to build 20. That was what we budgeted for, to build 20. Now we surpass 20. We have gone 32. The Portland Poor Relief Department is charged with the upkeep of the Gibson's property at no cost to the couple. Two more mentally ill detainees will be released from prison later this month through the efforts of the Legal Aid Council, LAC. They are Abraham Lawrence, who has been incarcerated for 23 years, and Morris Small, who was admitted to a correctional facility in 2004. Mr. Lawrence appeared in the St. Elizabeth Parish Court earlier this month, while Mr. Small is set to appear in the Trelawney Parish Court on July 30. Executive Director of the LAC, Hugh Faulkner, says the Council stands ready to bear the cost for the psychiatric evaluations necessary to ensure the release of mentally ill detainees. The Court requires that mentally ill citizens who come in conflict with the law be released in the care of either a family member or an approved institution. Family members have pledged to care for Lawrence upon his release and Small, who has no next of kin, will be accepted by a Falmouth infirmary. Cabinet has approved the establishment of a National Oversight Committee for the Justice Ministry's Child Diversion Program. Thirteen parish committees have also been approved to oversee the operation of child diversion in all 14 parishes. Portfolio Minister Delroy Chuck provided the update during the ministry's recent Access to Justice Live digital town hall meeting which focused on children and the justice system. The National Oversight Committee will be chaired by Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Justice, Sansia Bennett Templer. With respect to child diversion, if we can save a dozen or a hundred, and quite frankly, several hundred, are we from engaging in gangs? Are we from further offending? Are we from a lifetime of crime? Not only do we save them from the prisons in the long term, but we save them from overburdening the, the court system. We save them from interfering with the neighbors and the community properties. We save them from general offending. And if that can be done, it will be a major impact on criminality. During the digital town hall, consultant with the National Child Diversion Program, Ruth Carey, called on Jamaicans to sign up as mentors for the program. Interested persons can visit the ministry's website at moj.gov.jm and fill out the application form. 
Counselors, psychologists, and social workers are also being urged to volunteer and offer their services. Persons can contact the ministry at 876-906-4923-31 or visit the head office at 61 Constant Spring Road, Kingston 10. The Child Diversion Program focuses on diverting children who have come in conflict with the law away from the criminal justice system. Technology Minister Fable Williams says more e-participation software applications will be rolled out by her ministry this fiscal year. She says these apps are intended to foster civic engagement and open participatory governance through the use of information and communications technology, ICT. Just as an example, we've been working with the JPS on an app that would allow uh, persons who are having issues with streetlights to be able to put that information into the app, take a picture of the streetlight, upload it, and follow the progress. Uh, so this will allow persons to um, feel more engaged in the system and to know that their problems are being dealt with or at least they have the information uh, to let them know where their issues are in the system. Minister Williams was addressing a debriefing session at the Canadian High Commission in St. Andrew recently for Jamaican participants in the 2020 Collision Tech Conference. And finally, Balcom Drive Primary in Kingston is the latest school to benefit from government's Tablets for Teachers program, which aims to assist educators while they work from home. The school received 11 tablet computers last Thursday from eLearning Jamaica Company Limited, an agency of the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology. During the ceremony, Prime Minister Andrew Holness encouraged the teachers to use the equipment to enhance the learning experience for their students. The use of technology to enhance teaching and learning through digital inclusion and digital literacy has been a key objective of the government. The temporary closure of schools as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic has reinforced the need for us to accelerate progress in achieving this objective. Under the Tablets for Teachers program, government has procured 65,000 devices for distribution at a cost of 1.1 million US dollars. More than 2,000 tablets have so far been distributed to teachers at 122 schools. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.